This guide is going to apply to both difficulties of Damien and Lotus because they're more or less the same with a little bit extra. Lotus is one of the most mechanically difficult fights in the mid-game progression, especially on the hard difficulty. Starting the fight, you're going to want to stand perfectly still in the center. The laser spawns in the same orientation every single time, but the delay on when it actually starts is a little bit unpredictable. So by standing at the spot where you spawn in, no matter what the delay, you're going to be safe. And in case you're unfamiliar with this fight entirely, touching the laser will result in an instant kill. Phase 1 is mostly just you following the laser around in a windmill pattern. Any class that has any ability that makes your character intangible and able to pass through the lasers makes phase one really kind of a joke. And if you're not fortunate enough to be playing a class with some kind of teleport-like mechanic, you're going to need to use the portals. The portals allow you to go from the top left or the top right down to the opposite side, and you can only go from up to down, not down to up. One very important thing for any class that has a double tap up upwards jump such as demons, do not spam up on the portals. When you come out the other side of one of these portals, you're actually slightly suspended in the air and you will do a double jump probably into the laser and die. There are however three things that you need to worry about regarding the laser. First is the fact that you may have noticed it likes to jitter around. Now this may be determined by multiple factors being latency, your computer's performance, or even just because that's the way the fight is designed. I'm not entirely sure, you just need to be aware that it likes to do that and it can be very unpredictable and dangerous. Number two, at any point the laser will slow down and then it will start rotating in the opposite direction. You need to be prepared for this because if you're too close to it when it starts rotating, it's very easy to die because of this. And number three, and probably the most consistently dangerous mechanic is the fact that the laser can speed up for some indeterminate amount of time. It'll start rotating considerably faster, and this is extraordinarily dangerous, especially if you're a class with high commitment attacks. In the case that you do die to a sped up laser, what I would recommend is leaving your character dead for as long as possible and give the laser a chance to slow down to its natural speed. Most classes get very little opportunity to get any meaningful full amount of damage in during the sped up laser phase, so leaving your character dead isn't even really that much of a detriment as far as the overall timer goes. Now let's cover the things making it harder to dodge the laser. Each of the four different colored bots has their own status effect that they apply when they self-destruct on top of you. Generally, the green ones are going to be the most threatening, but that might vary from person to person, but the reversal of controls is definitely a mechanic that gets me killed the most. Slow can be dangerous too, but a lot of classes have mechanics that can subvert that entirely. You'll also notice that the bots always come from the same spot, with the green one's coming from the top right, so if you have some kind of deployable summon like Night Lord or Shadower, you can always put in the top right to help keep those at bay specifically. And the last specific mechanic in phase one is just the debris falling from the ceiling, which is going to be a constant that only gets worse and worse and worse as the fight goes on, especially in hard mode. Now we're also going to be switching over to hard mode footage from here on. Let's immediately start with the most dangerous mechanic of phase two and three, that is the electrified floor. Here you see two platforms falling on the left and right. A random number of platforms will fall in random positions. Here you'll need to either stay stand on the platform or use some ability to hover above the map for a short period of time to actually avoid getting killed. In normal difficulty, you will be able to take at least one tick of the laser's damage, but it does tick fast enough that you can't just be complacent. The nice thing about when you get a platform in the corner like this is you don't need to worry about the actual knockback from Lotus. Normally you can be knocked off of the platforms into the laser and that is where the most dangerous part comes in. And it is possible for only one platform to drop, meaning that if you get hit by it and destroy it, you're up to class mechanics alone to keep you alive during that laser phase. Mechanics such as Super Stance and Dark Sight end up helping you tremendously during this fight. Both of them actually make staying on the platform to avoid the laser floor significantly easier, as well as also helping you deal consistent damage to Lotus without being stunned and CC'd all the time. As far as Lotus' attack that he does himself, this is his most dangerous attack, and it's not because of the damage it does. It's 30% in normal and 40% in hard, but the real threat is the knockback. On normal difficulty, it's mostly an inconvenience, just slowing down your DPS, but on hard mode, it is incredibly likely that you will be knocked into several projectiles, which can very quickly result in a death. So it's important that you use whatever mechanics your class has, whether it be a dash, a teleport, or even a backstep at max range to just not get hit by it in the first place. Enemy outlines will also allow you to see when he's doing this a lot easier. Sometimes you'll also see these little gravity wells come up. If you get hit by those, it just throws you up into the air, which can be dangerous in its own way because it can knock you into projectiles and can very easily chain some damage. They're also a lot more dangerous in phase three. The last mechanic in phase two you need to be aware of is the big blue ball you see bouncing around on the screen, pretending to be a wind 
Windows XP logo. In normal difficulty, you really won't need to concern yourself with that mechanic that much because auto potting is really going to take care of you and chip damage isn't as big of a concern. But in hard mode, chip damage can be incredibly threatening and you should be wary of it and when your potion cooldown is coming up. Classes with consistent lifesteal and healing mechanics probably don't have to worry too much about it at all in any difficulty or if you have really good healing familiars. Moving on to phase three, and I would like to remind you once again, this is hard mode footage and it will be significantly easier and less cluttered on your screen on normal. The mechanics are still the same, it's the frequency that changes on hard mode, and it changes a lot. You can see right at the gate that there is a lot of stuff falling from the ceiling. We are talking a never-ending stream of debris raining from this ceiling on hard mode, and every single mechanic from phase two and some new ones, such as this energy ball attack. Lotus goes to the middle of the screen, becomes intangible, and then starts firing these purple energy balls which will one-shot you. Now they don't have infinite vertical range, you can jump over or hover above them, but I would recommend just dodging them instead. You should also know that the balls themselves do not have a hitbox, it's when they explode on the ground that the actual damage is done, meaning you don't need to worry about getting hit by them. They're also marked by little purple circles on the ground giving you ample time to dodge them before they explode. Easier said than done when there's a bunch of demolishers raining from the sky that are ready to one-shot you. As with all the other debris, Dark Sight will also dodge the demolishers. Just as with Phase 2, the electrified floor is going to be the most dangerous mechanic. You are going to be incredibly reliant on just how generous it is with how many platforms drop and the location and availability of the when they do. If you don't have Blink or some class mechanic to hover above the electrified floor, it's very easy for a bunch of demolishers to rain down on the only platforms that you have, making it a kind of unwinnable situation. That is mostly pertaining to hard mode though, on normal it's a lot less likely that that is going to happen. The next phase 3 mechanic is the little poison field. Now despite the fact that it's called a poison field, it doesn't actually do any damage. What it does is it slows your character down and prevents you from jumping. How threatening this is, is entirely dependent on how much is going on and what attack Lotus is doing at the time. If platforms fall down, that can be exceptionally dangerous because you have no natural way to jump up onto the platform. A generic way to fix this that every class has access to is by putting the rope lift skill into your V matrix. This allows you to jump up onto any platform that you're currently standing in front of. Hero's Will is also going to allow you to either cleanse the debuff on you or stay within the field for at least three seconds without being worried about its negative effects. The final mechanic you need to be worried about in the Lotus fight is his gravitational pull. You'll see an AoE pulse around Lotus and then you will be pulled towards Lotus. This can be pretty dangerous because it usually likes to follow it up with a knockback attack and anytime you're being forced into movement in this fight, it just usually means into a bunch of debris or something bad like a demolisher. Normal Lotus is a very manageable fight with dangerous mechanics that can be dodged quite fairly. Hard Lotus on the other hand is quite, it is quite the barrage of non-stop one-shots. I've been exclusively fighting Hard Lotus for about half a year now solo and it's still very easy to die. Make one mistake and you'll die within half a second. And sometimes it's just bad luck. Now let's move on to the much easier fight in terms of mechanics, but much more difficult in terms of DPS, Damien. Compared to most other bosses, Damien is a very mechanically easy fight. Let's begin with the blue energy orbs. Periodically throughout the fight, Damien is going to summon these blue orbs across the map. After a short delay, a hand is going to form towards the ground and will try to grab the player. Should it succeed in hitting you, you are going to be faced with a little chicken dance like minigame. If you fail this minigame, you will be stunned for quite a long period of time, which is pretty likely to make you die to something else. And let's just rewind that to take a look at the demon pillars. When these things explode, they do 100% damage, but they do not have infinite vertical range, meaning they can be jumped over or hovered above. Now let's talk about the stacks, because this is arguably the most important mechanic of the Damien fight and what actually makes phase one a little bit more challenging than phase two in my opinion. Every 30 seconds, a player is going to be inflicted with a stack of this debuff, or if you're alone, it's going to be you every single time. He will also inflict it when he hits with certain attacks. If a player does get to seven stacks, they're instantly killed and they will summon a second smaller copy of the sword you see floating around the screen. It doesn't last forever, but it does make the fight significantly more difficult for a short period of time. To cleanse the stacks from your character, you're going to need to hold your interact button on this altar that spawns. Now it does spawn in random positions and only lasts a limited amount of time. You can also both move and duck while interacting with the altar, but not too far or you'll interrupt it. Any damage will also interrupt it, including dodge damage from Dark Sight. Try not to be too on top of cleansing your stacks, but also take advantage of opportunities when they come up. When the sword plants itself in the ground like this, you know the biggest obstacles out of the game for a little bit, giving you a good opportunity. You never know when they're going to come again, so an opportunity like this is even a good chance to get rid of maybe even only like two or three stacks, even though it's not threatening you, you just don't know when you're going to get another chance to cleanse so easily. Now let's cover his meteor attack. Damien is going to go up into the air and start raining down meteors that can be dodged with dark sight. Now you can jump up and attack, but sometimes you might get greedy like this and get yourself killed. 
Some classes are a little bit better at others than actually dealing damage during that attack, but it is still a good chance to get a couple extra hits in, because otherwise you're just sitting there waiting for him to get down. You're also going to notice the sword occasionally plants itself in the ground like this, creating an aura that occasionally explodes dealing damage to the player. This can very easily kill the player if you're standing within it, but much like the gas explosions from earlier, it does not have infinite vertical range and can be jumped over. One attack you're going to see Damien do quite often is this dive, where he floats up in the air for a little bit and he dives diagonally down. Now in phase one, this is not a threatening attack. It's not going to kill you. All it's going to do is give you a stack of his debuff. So you do still want to dodge it all the same, but in phase two, it is going to kill you. In both phases, is Damien as a charge stack. In phase one, he charges up this galaxy effect, charges through it, and does a knockback effect on you. Now, the hitbox lingers much longer than the animation would suggest. It's not dangerous, though. You just get a stack and some knockback and a little damage. And as far as phase one is concerned, that's really all you need to worry about. It's mostly about stack management. Now, just remember, when you're using the altar, you can duck and move to help dodge the sword a little bit, and ducking really does help. And of course, long iframes will as well, but not every class has access to an iframe that lasts longer than like three to four seconds. And many ones that do are tied to burst, and you don't exactly want to spend your burst trying to collect stacks. So once you get Damien down to 30% HP, it's time for phase two. And should there be an altar up when you hit this phase switch, you do actually have enough time to cleanse your debuffs, but it is a very small window. But don't worry, because cleansing stacks is actually significantly easier in phase two than it is in phase one. Right away here, we're going to see a brand new mechanic of phase two, which is this new dash that Damien gets. He dashes and makes three terrors that then explode, surprise, dealing 100% HP damage. You're also going to have these giant blue balls following you for the entire boss fight, and if you're standing within it, your damage and healing received are both reduced by 90%. And don't worry, because that ball will get bigger, and there will also be two more of them. Managing the position of these blue energy balls, as well as doing meaningful damage at the same time, can be very annoying, especially for certain classes. Which, by the way, if you're a wind archer, you can actually pin them in a corner with your taunt, and it will slow them down. Damien is, of course, still going to have his phase 1 meteor attack, only it looks a little bit different now. It's still basically the exact same attack, just reskinned. Basically, every mechanic from phase one is still present in phase two in some way shape or form except for the sword unless you get to seven stacks which in that case welcome back to the sword mechanic as you just saw, he does still have his charge, but without the ridiculous startup delay. Now he does it rather quickly, except now you also have the option to duck under it. You also don't have to worry about the very small amount of damage that the blue orbs do to you, interrupting you cleansing your stacks. Now, if you have boss outlines on here, you can see that Damien goes invisible for a couple seconds. When he does this, he's going to go over to the left side of the screen and bind everyone with this effect. Normally, if you weren't bound by one of the blue orbs like I was, you would have to do the spamming left-right mechanic to get out of it and do some damage to Damien. If you do not do enough damage to in that time, he will one-shot everybody. And if your class has a deployable summon, you can always put it on the left side of your screen because he will always stand in the same spot and it's potentially able to do enough damage for you. Now, the last phase two mechanic you really need to be aware of is his bullet hell. He'll spin in his green tornado and fire out constant projectiles. You can either jump over them like a bullet hell, run all the way to the right or left just outranging it, or the best option is usually to stand right on top of Damien where the projectiles aren't spawning. The unfortunate part of this is probably the blue orbs are going to be on top of you, just making it so you're not really dealing that much damage damage to him, but in some cases, some damage is still better than no damage. The thing about Damien is hard and normal are completely identical in terms of mechanics and how much damage they all do. The major difference is Damien just has way, way more health on hard mode, and that makes him a lot more of a difficult fight because he's very elusive and he's hard to deal consistent damage to. Don't get greedy, adhere to the mechanics properly, take advantage of the windows when you see them, and manage the orbs properly, and Damien is a really easy fight. That is where this one is going to end because it took a lot longer to get through Damien and Lotus than I originally expected. So thank you to my patrons and my members for supporting me as always. Thank you to you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one with probably Guardian Angel Slime.